So hello everyone. Uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon from uh, all corners of the world, wherever you are watching. Welcome to the Kolkata edition of Campus to Companies, wherein we talk about uh, successful alumni of uh, IST Shippur who have built uh, great companies of the future uh, from Calcutta, the city of joy. This is the second edition. The first edition was taken by our senior Sanjay Da, where we had companies from across the world uh, participating, alumni of IIS Chipur. So uh, without any further delay, I would uh, now request uh, the panelists to introduce themselves, starting with uh, Sumanda. Sumanda is from 91 Hi. back. Hi. Yes, Sumanda. Uh, if you can introduce yourself. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. Uh, it is my pleasure to be uh, here today to deliver certain things, certain experience amongst the entire uh, B, all B college people and others, young uh, entrepreneurs, would be entrepreneurs. Uh, myself uh, is from a very lower middle class family. Uh, my teacher was school teacher basically, and uh, I am. I was initially from very remote village from Bonga. Later, uh, I studied in Borno Ramakrishna Mission up to class six, and then class seven to ten, I studied Rohra Ramakrishna Mission. I used to stay in hotel hostel. Uh, rather, uh, after that, uh, I did my uh, high secondary from VC College Rohra. Same uh, this. Uh, uh, mission. Uh, then after uh, that, uh, through joint entrance, uh, I was fortunate to be uh, studying to be an alumni of B College Shippur uh, in 1991. I passed out basically. This is the thing. Since then, I uh, started my career with Sipcon Construction for a year. So after leaving Sipcon, I joined with Isaac John Thompson. I worked there for two years. Then I joined with Nico Corporation, their project division. I worked there till 2004 for 10 years in their project division. Then I joined with Ramke Infrastructure. I was there for a year as in Eastern region. And 2005, past December onwards, I started my venture uh, forming a company, Rainbow Infrastructure Private Limited. Today I am here. That, that is the basic introduction I can place right now and we'll proceed further. With the further question, let my other brothers speak their uh, introduction, then we'll participate uh, all along. So, I did the uh... yeah, uh, uh, thanks, uh, Gabesu, and uh, thanks, Aryanth and Sapunda, to give me a chance to um, come here and uh, meet, uh, meet uh, all my seniors and um, juniors as well. Uh, yeah, I passed out. I was a student of uh, B College Shippur. Uh, I passed out in 1994. After that, I joined. I started my career in pretty much IT and software industry. Uh, after a while, uh, pretty pretty much uh, at a bit late stage in my career, in 2016. Uh, I started Simplex Solutions, and uh, and I am still working as a as a full-time working director in that organization. Uh, that's that's the summary. Yeah. Mansur. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Mansur Hassan. Uh, I'm traveling today, and you can hear lots of background noise. So sorry for that. Uh, regarding my intro, I passed out uh, from BE College back in 2003 from mechanical engineering department. And then initially I got placed in a core company, uh, but I always wanted to move into IT, unfortunately. <laughs> so after a few months, I joined IBM and I spent about 20 years with IBM. Uh, after spending that amount of time, uh, of course, uh, I primarily worked in the area of enterprise applications, primarily SAP. Um, and uh, I played various roles. So uh, ba uh, back in 2023, November, uh, September, I left IBM. And at that point, I was the uh, uh, SAP practice lead for IBM India's public sector. Uh, but MSQ, uh, my family and a couple of friends, they formed 
sometime back and after leaving IBM, I took over the responsibility of running Investive. So from there, my entrepreneurial journey started, you can say. Uh, and yeah, we, we can talk about more uh, when the questions come. Yeah, to introduce myself, uh, myself, Arihant Kothari, I passed out MBA in financial management from B College Shippur, then uh, took up a job with Interest of Technologies, a uh, listed company in, at that time, the dot-com uh, boom was there after that work with uh, organizations like DP House and Company, Patent and Trademark Attorneys, several startups, and now presently managing the Startup Incubation Center here uh, uh, on behalf of NASCOM with, uh, in partnership with Government of West Bengal, so helping startups and entrepreneurs. So, uh, so that is about me. So with that, uh, we come to the first set of questions. So, uh, like let's start with Manzoor in terms of uh, what excited you uh, for entrepreneurship? Like uh, what was your passion for entrepreneurship? Did you start uh, like were you straight away starting from college? Did you see see, uh, see that you will do entrepreneurship or later in life? And how did MS Cube happen? Okay, so um, uh, in the college days, uh, well, we were all very keen to get a job, to be very honest, right? And then we get into job, uh, we got the exposure uh, to different industries. We came across various leaders uh, throughout our career. Nevertheless, so what I realized that uh, the kind of uh, uh, kind of experience I have gathered, probably I can do little more as opposed to what I have been doing in the regular job. Uh, entrepreneurship to me means it's an opportunity to explore yourself more, to chase your own dream, and very importantly, generate some jobs for for some people at least, right? So. That is the part I like most about the finish. But at the end of the day, it's more about uh, living your own dream. Okay, to do something on your own and do something more every day and manage, not only manage, rather you decide at what time you will do what. So that kind of freedom, uh, that's the real pleasure to me. Yeah. So Okay. Jayadipta, your views and uh, what was your that entrepreneurship kira that uh, hit you and when? Yeah. Um, I would not say in my case it was a very thoughtful or uh, planned decision to move from a regular job to entrepreneurship. Rather, uh, I kind of like uh, had uh, gone along with my life as it took and then uh, opportunities as it came. Um, and over time, what I uh, what I I realized that uh, after learning something in the software industry and IT industry, um, and I moved back to Kolkata. I live in Kolkata right now uh, for a long time, um, and I saw that there is a gap that uh, young engineers uh, coming out from several different colleges uh, in Kolkata. Uh, facing and working on a uh, on a uh, multinational and international projects, uh, they are facing a humongous gap uh, in terms of knowledge, in terms of uh, work pattern, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, ethics, in terms of uh, behavior, in terms of discipline. More or less, every sphere in the professional life. And uh, that is one part. And the second part is that I uh, uh, I thought that there is a gap that that I can play a role. Uh, my I can set up an organization and the organization can play a role that bring up the uh, get the young engineers recruited and help them go up the career and provide the service from out of Kolkata. That will obviously uh, as a byproduct will generate some employment. Uh, will contribute to the uh, to the career of uh, those young guys and at the same time that we can serve, we can deliver, we can produce uh, some quality products, quality softwares, quality services that the whole world, I mean, whole world means outside Kolkata people might be interested and uh, and we will survive as an organization and as a team. So that's pretty much the journey. I am not exactly sure how much it was like planned or 
uh, or uh, thought of uh, quite quite well in advance and uh, meticulously implemented. Rather, we kind of like took it as it came, and uh, we are here today. We are hundred plus people over the time. Okay. Uh, Sumanda, for you, was it an accident or was it planned entrepreneurship? Actually, uh, it is not an accident. Basically, uh, uh, I few things I want to spell. I have spelled out in my video. I have, in this uh, YouTube shared. Actually, my father uh, I had a very strong personality and uh, very best leadership quality. From there, I inherited this. In B college days also, I was. Uh, General Secretary in Students Union in 1990. So leadership was always there, number one. Number two, I have already spelled that when we in our childhood, we used to study at the cost of the other's money, basically. Because our uh, school days, it was fees was two rupees, three rupees only. In college days also, uh, the fees was 27, 28 rupees, which I have uh, spelled. And I was also national scholarship holder, used to get 300 rupees per month. So overall monthly expenditure was around 400, 425. So major education was up to B, it was done public money. It was my customary feelings always from my inside that to contribute, to return back something to the society. So that was the main uh, uh, governing factor for doing certain thing. So definitely uh, in the initial days, because we are from very, I am from very lower middle class family. So Initially, we have to support the family, my father, parents, everybody. So after a certain time, so I choose a time with some experience and started the business. And today, around 1,500 odd people are working in my organization, all together, including worker and staff. That's all. So I'm very satisfied, and that's all. Thank you, Sumanda. Uh, with that, uh, let me uh, ask you the next question in terms of how do you keep people motivated in your organization? To me? Yes. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, first thing is that uh, what I, I, have, uh, I have built up in my organization that is the attrition rate in my organization is very less. That's a beautiful thing uh, I could establish. It is not that money, everything. I I try to run this organization as a in corporate style, basically. So the, the, the full freedom is given to all the employees, uh, uh, full financial liberty, administrative liberty, everything is given. And I take care of them sometimes in college mood, sometimes in bossing mood. Not always bossing mood, not always friend mood. So people are motivated. It is a positive growth is always there. And I always inculc try to inculcate few things among the employee that honesty is the best first thing, first priority in uh, uh, personal life, in job, in quality, or in deliverable. Everything honesty must be there, which I mentioned. Sumanda, maintain. one thing I was seeing on your video also and uh, would like to share with the audience also, you have given good promotions to your employees, like making them directors. Yes, yes, yes. So how, yes, how did you decide that? How do you decide? Actually, my 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 target is just like I follow the Larson and Tubro module. See, today, no Larson is not there or Tubro is not there. The organization is running. So initially, I planned that. See, I have seen after studying few cases up in Bengal organization, up to 20 crore achieving target, it doesn't matter. Anybody can achieve. But after that, uh, for want of their previous successors, basically, the generally the majority of the company gets fallen down after that. But if you cross 20 crore uh, threshold uh, to 50 crore or 100 crore or 500 crore, it requires a lot of professionals in the, into your system, to be in that in system. In any professional works, then some encouragement to be given to them for the building of the future. So I have decided initially from day one that uh, uh, the people uh, working in our organization with seniority, sincerity, or dedication, I study them and I built up with them and promote with them. And I am building up, bringing up them as direct. Already three other directors are my colleague elevated to their very long time. Somojit is 2000, since 2009, Devashi is there, Shankunil, and next generation also. Four or five people I have already built up. I have already put them, the fillers, given the, the fillers that you must be ready to take up the organization up to 20 years or 15, 20 years. Because my 
Aim is to reach somewhere around 500 to 1000 crore turnover. So that's why I have, I have, I have tried to make the professionalism more uh, prominent in this organization rather than family uh, requirement. That is the main thing basically. So Adida, in your organization, how do you keep your people motivated? It's a tech uh, uh, organization. It's it's really challenging yeah. in terms of. Uh, it's very hard to answer after Sumanda. Let me be candid about it, okay? So because Sumanda covered a lot and probably most of the important items uh, people do follow, uh, try to follow at least. Uh, one Only one item I would like to add after Sumanda is that uh, being in IT, IT organization, being in this uh, software computer industry, uh, one thing works for us and, and rather I follow that I always keep a learning opportunity uh, for every single employee and in the different projects. And uh, I mean, in one single word, I would say that the learning is the motivation. I mean, that's what I try to uh, follow and I to try to uh, set up the environment or other um, uh, try to provide them the opportunity or seek the opportunity. And I think that works for us. Uh, and but maybe being in an IT organization, that uh, it is a typical uh, easy problem to solve. In another type of organization, maybe different. But in our case, uh, in addition to what Shubhanda said, I don't want to repeat. Uh, learning is the motivation. That is something uh, works good for us. That I do follow. Manzoor, you yeah. have a very interesting background in terms of being the CEO and uh, taking stake, and so you have a you have seen blend of both people and business. So, does uh, how do you, we would like to hear from you in terms of what mm -hmm. keeps people motivated? Is what what you have seen in terms of what you have done is that or something else for MSQ? Well, uh, I, I think I'm not saying anything new here, but uh, just to touch up on this topic, uh, I'm a firm believer of agile way of working. So I want to make sure all the people who are working for my organization, they... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. they have all the freedom. There is no micromanagement. Because in the, the main challenge that is uh, attrition. Right. Uh, so our goal is to make sure people stay with us for a longer period, and and yeah, we incentivize. Uh, we incentivize based on performance uh, for our people, and that way we are controlling the attrition and making sure people stay with us for a longer period. So uh, with that covered, uh, we now come to the fundraising part of uh, your. Uh, companies. So, Manzur, like, uh, how did your fundraising journey start? Uh, of course, uh, it's been very challenging at initial times and now, till now, of course, funding is always a challenge. You have investor expectations, you have shareholder expectations. So, how has your fundraising journey been like from the early times to now? Well, uh, be very honest with you, we haven't got heat funding or the series funding as such, right? So when we started MS Cube, uh, we self-funded the initial set of products. And then uh, to run those products in the market, we needed funding and we reached out to our known channels and we raised funding, uh, like uh, very small funding from people. Uh, and every essentially it was more like volume based. So Lots of people they have, uh, they they invested a small amount, and the commitment from our side was like our revenue sharing, right, for the product. So that's how uh, MS Cube started because we had a, a market product called Go Bikes, which is more like uh, electric bike rental, uh, which is a uh, which is running on one app. The app was indigenously built by MS Cube, so. About 100 plus bikes, electric bikes, they run across different part of Kolkata. Uh, so yes, when we procured those bikes, you know it's very capital intensive, right? So when we procured those bikes, we have we have secured funding from individuals with the commitment of revenue share. That's how we started, right? And yeah, for the last three 
years, we have been giving them the return. But eventually, MS Cube evolved into more of a IT services company because we tried our best to make it a product company. We were not successful. But then we switched to service industry. And yes, now I think we are on the right path where we are catering service to different technology domains, different business particles, and around the globe. Jaidipta, what has your fundraising journey been? Yeah, I mean, uh, I was hearing what Manjit was saying. Our journey was just kind of like a little bit opposite uh, compared to what Manjit said. Uh, so they started with product and then now they've turned it to service. Our case was just opposite. We started with service and we still do service a lot. I mean, rather than 99%, 98% of our business is in service at this moment. And through service, we tried to move into the product side. So our uh, our financial side was kind of like self-funded. Uh, uh, we earned the money and then uh, now we are in a position that we try, like to invest from our own earning. Uh, yeah, first one year, uh, one and a half year was a little bit challenging. And uh, I personally and a couple of other people has worked through that one year with a salary sacrifice. Uh, and uh, and made a kind of like a foundation of the company. But uh, since then, over the last five, six years, it is in a self-sustaining mode. And so we really didn't go out for a venture funding yet. Uh, we are working on the products, couple of products. And if the, uh, we get a successful uh, footprint on the product side, then probably the discussion will come. So that's the that's our journey. Sumanda, for you, I think maybe I may be wrong, but uh, the journey must have been different in terms of fundraising because you are dealing with various construct, uh, contractual works and, uh, of course, the working capital and the cycle is a bit longer and not the usual um, IT types. So, why did you say want to, I want to share a certain thing <clears throat> regarding day one to in a brief. So when I started this business in 2005, I had only 2.6 lakhs in my pocket. That is the, my only investment till now. Till today, we are this year we are reaching around 100 crore turnover. So entire thing is basically from 2.6 lakhs. So initially, uh, I took a lot of credit cards and all the cash limit I used to utilize for this uh, uh, fund every month. Then slowly, slowly, after two, three years balance sheet, I went to bank, some limit was given. Today, jobs, lot of jobs are booking are there. So all bank supports are being available. Even we are going for multi-banking also. So really, you're correct. The fund relation is a little bit longer, but bank guarantee all this support from client because service industry, it is basically. So it is now, fund is available in the market. If the proper job booking and proper accounts record since like 19 years, the account records is fantastic, I must say. So now I'm getting full support from uh, all the banks and etc. It's good right now. Happy. Thank you, Sumanda. Glad to hear that. Uh, so any, any advice you would want to give to, I understand our college has a lot of... Uh, mechanical, civil, engineering, entrepreneurs and students, any mistakes that you did during your fundraising journey, any one highlight you want to give which uh, we should not do? Uh, mistake means, uh, see, uh, uh, to learn the things, this accounts portion, it took a little bit time for me because I was not from accounts background. I didn't have good account advice at that time. So initially, I lost a lot of money because my uh, unwise uh, all decisions, which I didn't know, statutory compliance in India is very important. All the paper documentation is very important. So all those documentation part, if anybody takes care of from since beginning day one, I think people can save a lot of money, which uh, I, a lot of huge quantum of money got drained out due to ignorance, due to un, unwilling, not knowing the subject, basically. Now I have experienced and I can advise that this territory compliance in, in India, the country like India, everybody must follow from day one. And you can save a lot of money from that because due to a mistake, a lot of claims come. And I, I, I think I have lost 
three, four crore rupees uh, uh, due to this uh, uh, not knowing the subject basically. That is the main thing I can advise you. And the, make the file, IT return file, statutory compliance file, always very clean, clear, strong. Honesty level should be at its maximum. Things will automatically run on its smooth way. That is my clear advice to everybody. Thank you. Don't so jump much. into earning more money. Don't jump into money. Always go. Don't follow Lakshmi. Let follow. Let prepare yourself in such a way that Malakshmi follows you. That is my clear cut advice to all the young entrepreneur or college boys, etc. And strong willingness, strong honesty, dedication is the requirement. That's all. So with this, we come to Joydeep Da. So Joydeep Da, what do you think makes a great company? Paying salary on time, meeting customer expectations, meeting your shareholders, doing everything on time. I don't have any work. My work is all done. Or there is much more beyond that. No, whatever you said, everywhere there is a problem. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, whatever said, you said we miss salary on a particular date. Yes, we did miss that. We miss customer commitment. Yes, we did miss in certain cases, we miss quality delivery. We miss pretty much everywhere. We did mistakes. That's not a problem. But I think one thing I would like to uh, borrow, like what uh, borrow from Sumanda, uh, honesty. Honesty means every sphere of your uh, of your organization. It's financial honesty. It's not only financial honesty. That's one part. But honesty towards your work. Honesty towards your commitment. If you see that like you cannot deliver it on a certain time and you are meeting the customer, don't uh, fool around it. I mean, uh, honestly, uh, admit. If you did a mistake, admit. Uh, and uh, just explain that what you learned from the mistake and how you will do it differently next time. And that is the, then you will get the biggest appreciation around you with your employees, with your colleagues, with your customer, with your competitors, with your financial institutions, with your auditors, everywhere. I mean, that's the basically, I mean, that's what I would say uh, is the biggest, uh, biggest uh, item that somebody should consider in, uh, as Sumanda said, every sphere of your life, I mean, not in organization. Okay, I'll borrow that word. Uh, in our case, now taking that in a simpler term, uh, when you are working with the employees, give, give clear transparency. So honesty and transparency, I think the same word uh, spoken in two different uh, vocabulary, but so give a clear transparency. So let's say that one project is not going well. I will not hide it with my employees and uh, just we'll discuss with them what we can do to turn it around. I mean, uh, if you say that what makes it a great company, at least if you come and ask, talk to any employee, you will have a feeling that uh, that yeah it may not be uh, it may not maybe a great place may not be a great place but at least I know what is this so that is uh, that's that's what I think uh, gives a, a very good confidence uh, for the entire team like they know that where where they are what they are doing and what is expected out of them clarity and transparency I would say. So, Manzoor, uh, for you, uh, what, what were, what, or rather, what are the points that make a great company? Well, uh, I think, I think any great, great company that that we have seen, right, uh, in the world, uh, they are very, very committed towards their clients. So, to me, client satisfaction is the prime factor that makes a great company. If you are you beating your client's expectation or not, that differentiates you. But but to achieve that, you have to make sure that in your entire ecosystem, that means your people, your customer, and your vendor, all of them are aligned and you are making sure that everyone is getting their bit. So so as long as all these three set of people are happy, I think you will be achieved to meet your customer's expectation. Uh, I think I, I, I think there will be occasions where we have to uh, we have to do things which is not probably hundred percent aligned with uh, 
uh, what we have thought initially. That means what, I, what I'm trying to say here is you probably uh, are running a project as far as certain plan and then you come across some unexpected situation. So you cannot just be bogged down. You should be always having a plan B or plan C with you. Uh, and so that kind of flexibility, that kind of open culture will always help you achieve to beat your uh, uh, financial uh, targets as well alongside capturing new new customers because at the end of the day your success is measured by your customer acquisition your market penetration and your profit margin at the end of the day yeah so sumanda uh, yes with a lot of stress let let on honesty and uh, customer satisfaction you work a lot with government as i was seeing in the video also so uh, any any parameter you see that to make a great company you should have great relationships with government or uh, is it just government is just a catalyst no 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 one thing is that uh, i uh, one is no special relationship with in government or government department with me so simply it is only on through the process only system only we uh, emphasis on so what i'm trying to what i'm trying to ask is uh, do do your uh, customers or look like you uh, are very complacent in dealing with government and all that so that makes a great company or no it's not nothing like no that. no that is not the reason my two three point i want to just way i emphasis on post service customer service basically suppose i have i have done a job customer is facing any problem after finishing job calls me i personally give attention to that to attend the problem this is one the customer satisfaction one thing <laughs> number two is the quality i always if i do mistake also i can give as one example in budget paint howrah in front of our college in 2007 or 8 my one of my employee did some mistake and when Dr. Ghosh, the senior person, called me, I instantly went there and gave decision, just dismantle it and do proper. I lost a lot of money. The customer appreciated that is a wrong job. My people has done mistake. I have done redone without any uh, asking anything for compensation for that. In my organization also, I give the freedom to my boys that you take decision. You may do mistake. It, company will not make any hire and fire on you. You do mistake, take decision, but same mistake should not be repeated. So that is customer service quality, honesty, and I am very, very honest with my customer also. Very honest with my customer. Suppose that in any purview of my, suppose the customer is doing certain job that is not in my scope, but I am seeing some mistake is happening. I straight away talk to customer that you are doing this mistake. And a lot of customer likes my this attitude basically for the because. More than money in this business, I believe job satisfaction and what finally deliverable thing is being given, which will remain for hundreds of years. Basically, that is the main dominant uh, driven factor for me. And that is the main area why this company is uh, doing good these days and huge uh, appreciation in the market um, with, from most of the clients we are getting always. So, uh, so Mansoor, coming back to you, in terms of how has the entrepreneurship landscape uh, changed uh, since you passed out from the college? I understand uh, 20 years down the line, uh, things were uh, very different with no penetration of internet technology and lack of availability of information to now everything is easily available but overcrowded. So how do you think things have become easier or things have become more confusing? Mansoor, you are there? I guess so we lost him. Uh, maybe Joydeepda, you can uh, take up uh, this till gets back. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, with the with the evolution of internet, definitely things has changed. Uh, uh, but uh, it's not only the internet. Uh, with the internet, internet is just the technology. With the internet, the it had been a global village right over last twenty years. So there is no boundary. 
uh, and no boundary in terms of culture, no boundary in terms of uh, in terms of uh, communication channel, etc. So, uh, so that has been a major change. In addition to that, things like in India, like uh, when uh, I I recall, like uh, uh, in mid nineties when I started my career, and when I did uh, submitted my first IT return. I had to uh, I had to work with the IT uh, lawyer for three days, uh, going to their office and etc. And today, uh, people are submitting IT returns with a just a click, right? So this operational efficiency. I mean, internet is one side is like we are accepting, we are uh, collecting information. That's one part. And that entire operational efficiency in everywhere. Like today, you can set up an organization. Probably within one or two days, just submitting your document. You don't have to move from your desk. Uh, so, with this efficiency, the demand or other expectation comes. Like your efficiency has also increased, has to increase. Like yeah, the 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 same job, uh, my uh, what I used to do twenty years ago, and uh, the same job if I do it with the same efficiency today, I mean, world has progressed a long since then and people so, out there, are like are... Uh, i understand this uh, compliance part has become easier but in terms of making choices so has it not spoiled the choices like customers and vendors have more more choices now yeah yeah that's i i was coming exactly to that point so in in that with this demand like you have to be like a it's a it's a that's the famous saying of uh, darwin like uh, survival of the fittest like with this, with this improvement of the uh, technological improvement, cultural uh, shift, uh, global village, your expectation from a young entrepreneur to a established organization or to an individual comes down to an individual had been had shifted a lot from uh, from twenty years ago up until today, right? So you have to you have to be up to the challenge. That's the point. You have to be up to the challenge. You have to be efficient. You have to be uh, competitive enough uh, to be uh, able to 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 sustain, to be able to uh, uh, able to survive in this industry today. So that requires enough study, seriousness, sincerity. I mean, I mean honesty in a, in two sense. Like you have to be sincere and honest to what you want to do, and you have to put the best effort. There is no like just because of internet is there. In information are available abundant easily. Uh, there is no easy path. The things have been difficult. I mean, uh, I just uh, make a, a correlation uh, correlation with my college days. Uh, in in one class, uh, in one particular professor used to uh, ask for an open book question or open book exam. So you can have your notebook and you can have your books uh, when you are uh, you are attending that exam. To pass that exam was the toughest, to be honest. So open book exam was the toughest. I mean, that's what I learned in the college days. Rather, closed book exams are easy where the things are predictable. So uh, that is actually uh, in uh, every sphere of our life today. It's the same information is available to everybody. You have to make the right choice and what you are probably trying to come at also, uh, that you have to make use of the right information, right judgment, and you have to be efficient you have to raise your potential raise your ability raise your knowledge so that you can make uh, the right judgment of the available uh, options yeah i mean that's what it is that's the change sumanda what's the, what are your views my views is that to me business has becoming more uh, more easier with the days basically when we started or before that uh, with time, the more instruments are coming, more more, uh, more user friendly. Uh, if anybody want want to be entrepreneur, more uh, options are being getting opened every day. It may be through nets, it may be through financial instrument, it may be through government support. If if, if anybody is willing, but only thing is that anybody, my my, my advice to young entrepreneur that after passing college, if he is not or she is not inherited any family business, he or she must have two, three years experience initially in different industries 
and come to the this uh, this in uh, this entrepreneurship effort it is much much easier today it is enjoyable make it enjoyable enjoy every day every moment every job every movement and proceed further things are getting easier and it will be more eased out in coming day. doing business will be much easier in coming days it looks smooth so it is very easy thing basically it is not tough thing it is wrong idea that business is tough thing this is my so do business the more young people should come for entrepreneurship uh, keep honesty keep uh, dedication effort keep passion and think positively every tomorrow is a new day and it will make much much better thing uh, anybody can do in his life uh, till he lives this art so oh, manzur uh, we lost you so are you there uh, or... yes uh, am i audible now i am yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh -huh. so maybe yes, you can the... share your views the advent of internet right how it affected correct yes uh, how how has business scenario changed from 20 years since you passed out of the college to now so sure sure yeah i think uh, it has become become a little bit easier for the entrepreneurs because at the end of the day i think each and every entrepreneur should start here a lot because they need to know about their industry and also their competitors and that's how they realize or they understand what are the things they probably can do to create a differentiation because because unless there is a differentiation you are uh, it's very hard to be successful right as an entrepreneur so to me uh, 20 years back it is uh, digitization was not there as such but now with digitization we have access to lots of contents uh, at our fingertips and that is helping a lot because uh, the more we know uh, the more we think and the more idea we can come across okay yeah so like uh, i've been asked by a lot of people in fact when i was planning this session and discussing with you and the ecosystem players to ask a question on uh, like uh, hiring in terms of how do you hire people uh, so we'll be very specific so of course we can this this is an ocean and we can go on and on in terms of recruiting people retaining people attracting talent and all that but yeah there were two specific asked in terms of uh, how do you judge people uh, at the topmost level and uh, would you hire from your competitors? So, uh, like Manzur, maybe you can start uh, this. If you had to hire the topmost people, how do you, how you make, would make a final decision? Like this is it. Yes, this is the right fit. Of course, uh, given that he fits the technical skill and would you hire from your competitors? Well, as long as there is no, no hire clause, uh, then I will not think twice, right, to hire from my competitor as long as the person is qualified, right? Now, now the big question is how do you judge? Well, I think there are two parameters. One is the technical acumen and the domain experience and or I would say the domain experience, that's number one. But the most important thing is we have to judge whether the person is loyal and we can uh, we, we can we can really rely on this person because uh, because uh, we 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 at the top most level we should hire people with whom you should go to war without any kind of hesitancy so i think it comes with experience uh, there is no right or wrong answer here uh, it's more of an instinctive choice uh, in my opinion So, Jaydeepta, what uh, what do you think on these two points in terms of hiring at the top most level, and would you hire from your competitors? Uh, uh, first of all, yeah, I I would I would um, hire from my competitor. I mean, uh, if they, that whether he is coming from my competitor or not, that is not a uh, not a decision point for me. I mean, uh, he can be from my competitor, he cannot be maybe from other partners. But uh, obviously, I mean, for a particular uh, position that you are hiring, uh, obvious questions are there, obvious points you have to take. He has to have the right skill set, right attitude, motivation, 
uh, in terms of, uh, I mean, you judge his personal attitudes a lot. But one thing on top of that, I give a super uh, most importance is whether that guy is going to be a team player. Uh, I mean, how in terms of a in terms of a team player, how does he mix up with the team? How does he work uh, with the team? And uh, had there been a problem, like uh, the example Sumon is saying was saying uh, that one of his engineer or one of his colleague did something uh, wrong, and he has gone to cover it. Uh, so that is the first thing I would like to uh, judge for a, for a new app. Whether had that situation happens, that guy is going to run away or that guy is going to face that situation. So that is a one of my key point. In addition to that, like obviously, like the skill set, talent, uh, motivation, uh, honesty, previous track record, industry reputation, industry recommendations, all those things come into play anyway, right? I mean, otherwise you will not make a decision. Uh, but uh, but yeah, that's uh, uh, to be to be. I mean, how good uh, team member, team player uh, he is. That is one of my very important key factor in terms of hiring, particularly in a senior. Sumanda, uh... I I am while I recruiting anybody, I emphasize two three factors. First first and foremost thing, family background. I judge first. Number two, I judge adaptability. I frequently change topics. Some, some, some question he's answering, then topics, how he is fitting to that. It is not that every time he is giving the right answer. How is fitting to that? That I judge always. Then this uh, competency, technical competency, and it may be from my computer company or it doesn't matter. Everybody uh, must be loyal. His background, finance, that back, background, I judge always. If any good recommendation is there, I emphasis on that. Basically, these are the key areas I look after. Basically, that's all. Sure. So, uh, like. Uh, coming back to Joydeep, uh, what advice would you give to students who are starting entrepreneurship? Hmm, not sure. Hmm. Anyway, so uh, I think I think uh, most important part, uh, most important factor is that the listen to yourself. Um, try to judge, try to decide, or try to understand yourself. Uh, don't listen to anybody else. Yourself, that what exactly you want to do. I mean, somebody may be a very good employee. I mean, if, if you do make a wrong decision in your career, I mean, it's the only you are the person who is going to suffer. So somebody is a born entrepreneur, somebody wants to be an entrepreneur, and somebody will be successful as an entrepreneur. And the same person may not be successful as a corporate executive in another organization as well. It's a attitude, it's the perception, it's the personality as such. So uh, from that point of view, I will ask uh, a young professional rather than a young entrepreneur, first ask yourself, you want to be an entrepreneur or you want to be an executive uh, 20 years down the line? And that is number one. Number two is even you want to be an entrepreneur, again, uh, listen to seniors like I listened to Sumonda today. That one advice he gave today that even you decide to be an entrepreneur unless you are coming back with a very good track family record family business background do work for another organization for two three years he said two to three i would make it five okay so learn the industry learn the learn how a business being run its business is not being run based on its product i mean i saw many wonderful products died because of wrong business decisions and again Worthless products are successful because uh, right, uh, correct financial, business, marketing, sales decision has been made at the right time. So definitely I'm not advising anybody to make a pod, uh, wrong product or bad product. But at the same time, it's a 360 degree view of the whole thing. So 360 degree, uh, I mean, you have to be, you have to consider every sphere of the business if you want to make it successful. So um, whether you have the passion, whether you have the attitude, uh, you have to understand that. Somebody may be a very good, very good uh, worker on a particular area, particular skill, particular uh, technology, particular uh, environment, and they want to go any depth as you like 
he may not be a good business partner. Here you have to be an all-rounder. You may not know everything uh, on a particular item, but you have to know a little bit amount of, little bit from every sphere of the business if you want to be an entrepreneur rather than, uh, so that's a, that's a decision you have to make for yourself. And then uh, if you think, you no, know, you are that right person, you are the, you want to do, be an entrepreneur and you have that passion, you have that uh, personality, work towards that, prepare yourself. And for that, uh, the best advantage is that, yeah, look at, talk to other entrepreneurs, uh, uh, build your network. Net that is very important. Build up your network, connect people, learn from them. That's, I mean, that's what it is. So, Manzur, anything you want to add uh, in addition to what Jadita said? Well, a uh, little bit. I think uh, my recommendation to young entrepreneurs would be uh, a couple of things. Number one, be very clear about uh, what you are trying to achieve, be it a product, be it a service, but be very clear about the business plan, right? And a strategy should be very clearly defined. I want to achieve this in this many years by doing this, okay? And, uh, and when your plan is chalked out, then I think you know how to go about it. You, you can treat the path. Second thing is, you choose your partners wisely because whatever business you do, you have to make sure that the partners in your entrepreneurship journey are the people who can really bring value to the table. Because at the end of the day, it's a business, it's not a club. Okay. So sometimes people make mistakes, right, in choosing partners. So that is something, uh, if you can shout out initially, that really helps. And finally, uh, enjoy every moment of it. Rome was not built in one day, right? You might come across lots of snags, but if you're very honest, if you are very clear about your goal, then eventually success will come. That's it. Sumanda, your thoughts on students? Uh, it is a very nice thing. It is very nice thing. Manjur has told that enjoy. First thing, what I want to say, to another one thing I want to add, which I experience basically because those first time entrepreneur and who comes from lower middle class family while starting business definitely struggle basically. So uh, you have to uh, take a lot of decisions. Suppose when I started my business, I, uh, I got some job. So in my, in no man for support was there. I rang somebody that can you help me? He told that I am in job. I return back nine o'clock at home. Please come nine o'clock. I went there nine nine thirty. So naturally, I return back to twelve twelve thirty. So these sort of things generally surrounding people are not accustomed that this boy is coming twelve o'clock one o'clock. What happens? Certain initially, so lot of the surrounding sounds get up. You have to adopt that uh, skill to ignore those things. Then. After some days, this all will go back and you will succeed and they will come on to. Don't get depressed listening to somebody surrounding you telling certain wrong comment about it. Don't listen to that. Automatically, it will come fall into its path, basically. That is the one thing. Don't get depressed listening to that. Number two is this honesty. This is the quality as well as the enjoying. Number three is that do after passing college, two, three years, get experience. Start business. Biz, doing business is much easier to me than doing service. And be in a good organization, good ambience where you can be developed. Uh, you can develop other uh, entrepreneur from the organization. This way, I want to see the future of the entrepreneur. People should come for doing business. That is my biggest advice. There is nothing harm in it, nothing wrong in it, nothing risk in it. Is wrong idea that poisha thakle babsa hai. No. Babsa kuji kutteja poisha junokono babsa at time. This is my experience. That's so all. With that, we take a pause for a minute and see if uh, we have any questions from the audience. So we take a pause for a minute and see if we have any questions from the audience. After that, we'll wrap up. So any questions from the audience, so you all can raise hand, type on chat or.
so if there are no questions i guess uh, we were either uh, too simple or uh, like too complex so i don't know which one but yes certainly like uh, we enjoyed every part of it in terms of sharing our experiences and uh, as we conclude like uh, one concluding round or one last round would want to uh, ask uh, manzoor uh, joydeepda and sumanda so joydeepda uh, what what mistake did you make as an entrepreneur just one big mistake which you would not want your fellow entrepreneurs or those who are willing to come in this line or in this line to make yeah there were certain cases that uh, when i uh, didn't trust on my own ability or my own decisions and i uh, kind of like followed uh, some suggestions from came outside uh, thinking like they have more experience or uh, they are more knowledgeable or something uh, i what i learned from that yeah i mean definitely listen from everybody listen from every single corner learn but end of the day you have to make your own decision uh, and be uh, be confident uh, so in there yeah, there have been cases where i didn't apply that properly uh, and i uh, kind of like i think i would not do that uh, next time i mean even if it is a mistake i did i will do my own mistake rather than uh, uh, follow somebody else's path that is one solution So, Manzur, any any big mistake you did, you would not want your fellow entrepreneurs or your uh, peers to do. Ah, uh, yes, of course. <laughs> so, I think everyone makes mistakes, and that's how they learn. So, I also made mistake, and the mistake was um, just I was hung up with one particular idea and wiped out the. Enter, enter initial investment. I would say, okay, and uh, and started accumulating more money to make make the idea being realized, right? So, so I think that was the biggest thing, uh, biggest mistake. Uh, uh, we 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 should not be hung up uh, on certain ideas. Rather, we should really be thoughtful about the concept of stop loss. If something doesn't work. for a certain time then i think we should just shut it and veer to a different path and run, uh, and 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 start working on some different ideas yeah sumanda your views in terms of uh, uh, like uh, any any mistake uh, i yeah. remember we discussed in detail about the financials like you must have financial acumen and the idea uh, so that apart from that any any big mistake that you did Yeah, yeah. I made I made two mistakes basically, which I can recognize right now. In between, I started another business uh, in in medical field, but I could not succeed. So I, but later I found that that is not my expertise. Basically, I didn't know that subject. But uh, so I I so I should start certain some, some thing which I know basically is at least some ideas basically. So I lost lot of money there. Then I had to close down after this COVID one. number 2 is when i was working in different organization people used to see a certain angle me a certain angle i brought few of them when they were in problem approach me then after doing the business definitely i was in different acumen so it was very difficult for them to absorb me in the same way in different way rather they were trying to the same way the day i was there, his colleague that time so that that uh, few cases created a problem for me in this organization later i could uh, i got rid of that uh, the problem so next time i will not do that business so when i'm i'll select somebody i'll be very careful how that person will take up the myself and other seniors in this organization will wholeheartedly these are the two things uh, basically i i can share right now so with this uh, we pretty much come to an end of campus to companies kolkata edition on popular demand after the first edition of uh, campus to companies the global edition so thank you sumanda joydeepda and mansoor for sharing your experience i have personally learned a lot in terms of uh, entrepreneurship uh, is all about people processes and passion and i'm sure my fellow viewers as well as uh, audience seniors juniors and everyone across the globe has learned 
uh, and we'll continue to learn as the video uh, gets published. So with that, thanking you all and we come to the end of this session. Thank you, Gabesi, and thank you, Sapanda, for all the coordination and support. Uh, thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Bye.